If you want to know whether Mashiach is here, there's a very simple uh, indicator. When good news appears in the news, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, Mashiach is here. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> How you see this, this the vision going forward? Twenty twenty was such a pivotal year for the world, right? Um, and like, kind of like, what's the spiritual state of the world after twenty twenty? And what are some of the things that you see can happen um, as we move forward? You know, into this new space. Ironically, twenty twenty means perfect vision, right? And yet the year 2020 will go down in history as the year in which we saw nothing. <laughs> we went completely blind. <laughs> nothing was clear, nothing was sharp. Everything was confused. It was, it was the year of, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know. How do you treat this virus? I don't know. What are the symptoms? I don't know, nothing. <laughs> Who's the president? I don't know. <laughs> we didn't know anything. But, but here's, here's the, the sum of uh, a thumbnail sketch of history. Okay, so for the first two commandments of the Ten Commandments, I am God, your God, you shall have no other gods. <clears throat> now you can think of it as commandments. Like, this is what should be. I should be your God, and you should have no other God. You can also look at it as a statement of fact. It's a fact. I am God, there is no other God. So how do you combine the two? It's a commandment or it's a statement of, of reality or truth? Obviously, it's both. This truth that I am God and there is no other God, this is what you should understand. This is what you should implant in your mind and heart so that you're connected with that truth. So merge with this truth, with this reality. For all of history, there has been confusion. God or other gods, all sorts of combinations. Yes, God is God, but there are little gods. God is God, but not the only God. Or God is God, but I don't know which one he is. I'm confused. This one says this, this one says that. What needs to happen, what we call tikkun olam, the repairing of the world, the only thing that needs to be repaired is the confusion. Because when Adam and Chava ate from the tree of knowledge, the damage was that the good and the bad became intermingled. You couldn't separate them properly. In every good, there was a little evil, and in every evil, there was a little good, and it was so confusing. That's how it's been for 5,000 years. This year, 2020, some process began in which the good and the evil are being separated. The evil is becoming pure evil. And the good is becoming pure good. In practical terms, evil always concealed itself behind a facade. In the name of religion, you killed people. In the name of patriotism, you killed people. Out of loyalty to your country, other people had to die. Out of loyalty to your religion, everyone else had to be killed or converted or whatever. It was hard to argue because it was hiding behind the legitimacy. You know, you got to protect your country and you got to 
promote your religion. Sure. Nice, good. Today, that's not happening anymore. The liar does not try to conceal the lie. This is what I want. This is what I'm going to get. And that's all. I have no need to apologize for my, for my crimes, for my, for my lying, for my untruth. I don't care. That's when you look at that evil, it's scary. But really, it's the end. When the lie no longer has that kernel of truth, it's finished. It'll take a few days, a few months, it's gone. Without that little bit of truth, it can't, it can't exist. So this is, this is the, the uh, cleaning up of the effects of the tree of knowledge, which is all the world really needs. Just stop faking it. Stop calling evil good and stop calling good evil. And then good will be good, evil will be evil, and the world will become perfect. So what we're, what we're seeing, <clears throat> current events, not a prediction of the future, literally current events. Every day, the evil becomes more blatant, not more scary. There have been scarier times in history. It's less scary because it is so obvious. And the more obvious it becomes, the shorter its lifespan. And the good, the good is amazing because it's pure good. There's no, there's no uh, ulterior motives. There's no, there's no payoff. People are good because you're supposed to be good. It's, it's a beautiful process, but it's confusing. If you don't keep your eye on the goal, you can get very confused and very disheartened to the point of suicide. That, that's how serious this process is. So we have to be very clear and don't jump at every, every newscast, every headline you see. Now, that's not changing anything. The world is getting better, no matter how loud the evil screams. <laughs> In fact, the louder it screams, the more you know <laughs> that it's over. So it has been an amazing year. If you can sort out the message from the noise, and this year is going to be 10 times better. Although it certainly doesn't look that way if you listen to the news. But since when does the news tell you anything true? Nothing new there either. So that's why I think that if you want to know whether Mashiach is here, there's a very simple uh, indicator. When good news appears in the news, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know Mashiach is here. <laughs> <Amazing>. <laughs> so when a person says, I can't believe how evil things are. I can't believe how evil people are. Oh, that's good. Because <laughs> you used to believe. <laughs> you used to believe how evil people are. Now you can't believe it. That's progress. That's good. So on the one hand, relax. The world is sorting itself out. Just watch. On the other hand, if the world sorts itself out before you get to do a little mitzvah, you're going to regret it. So don't waste any time. You want to be part of this process, not just a spectator. So you have that choice. You can sit back, relax, enjoy the show, watch it happen, because it's happening, and it's going to happen with or without you. Emmas, it's with or without you, it's going to happen. But why would you let it happen without you? <laughs>
Why? Do something. Not because we're desperate, but because we're running out of time. When the world becomes perfect and doesn't need to be fixed or repaired, and you didn't participate, you can't claim a little bit of the action, it's going to be a regret. So don't, don't, don't sit around waiting. Put, put in your two cents worth. <laughs>